Hey everybody, I wanted to do a little preview of these summer brushes that are coming your way in just a couple weeks, maybe even sooner. And uh, this is a really diverse collection of brushes. It's really different. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Effects brushes, brushes for drawing, brushes for painting, and um, let's just jump right in. So the first brush is called Impressionista. And this is a really fun and sort of impressionist kind of style of brush. Um, I'm just going to put some marks down here on the canvas and you can see how nice that is. So taking full advantage of color dynamics and um, also the sharpness of the brush stroke, depending on how much pressure I'm using. So I get these really lovely layered blobby effects. Um, great for painting in a background that has a lot of texture and creates an interesting environment. So uh, that is something to enjoy. And of course, if you use some subtle variation in the color and then sample from your canvas like this, you can get some pretty beautiful blending effects as well, which I love. So good for a variety of things here as, as well as using it just with black because it's just got all that texture built in. And this is a nice way to just add a little bit of grit to something. Alrighty, so moving on, we have the Fresh Cut Brush. Now this is an inking brush, but it's a very large one. If you look over here, it's 300 pixels. That's a big brush. So why have such a big brush for inking? Well, because you can make a variety of brush strokes with it, like this, look at that. This is all with the same brush, just using the pressure to control the width. And you'll notice that no stroke is exactly like the last one, right? Nice variety in there. So if you're interested in doing some really um, expressive drawing and making those kinds of marks, then I highly recommend checking out this brush. I'm just pop in a little face here for just a moment. And you can see how nice it is to get all these various different kinds of marks with the same tool all the way through. So lots of things you can do with this one. Check that out. All right, now the Fresh Cut variant is, of course, a variant of that same brush. So slightly different texture and slightly different effects on the outside edges of the strokes that you paint, okay? So try that. Now the Bricks brush takes advantage of color dynamics as well. Why is it called the Bricks brush? Well, bricks, look at this. And so that reminded me of sort of a brick wall when I was making this brush. Um, Again, for texture and just for interest in an area that you have to color that's flat, so nice to use a brush like this. And uh, the color dynamics are gonna add that nice variety in the hue, saturation, and value um, wherever you make a mark. And I love those layering effects. You will get smaller marks with less pressure and much bigger marks with more pressure. I'll zoom in 100% so you can see this really is a big fat brush. 374 pixels in diameter. So you're getting a lot of coverage, very high def, good stuff. Uh, moving on, this is the Slashy Brush. Now Slashy Brush, again, a little bit of color dynamics built in, and it's got its own unique stamp to it that has one side that has a sort of a flat cut off edge, and then the other side has these little spikes. And because I use the flipping of the X and Y um, axis of the brush, you're going to get really cool mixes of one side of the other laying on top of everything. And you're also going to get this really rich texture that's built into the brush too. So uh, another one that's great. And what I like about this is uh, painting for a grass. So for example, I like just doing this, just come up and down. It's kind of a zigzag pattern like this. And you see what's happening there inside the areas that I'm painting, right? You can see those nice slashy diagonals and triangular shapes in there, which is lovely. So I like that very much for this kind of work. Concepts uh, artists, I know you'll find some really great uses for this one. Great for quickly filling in a little landscape kind of action, right? Um, there's a variant of this brush, uh, which has um, a more pronounced brush stamp inside of it. So you're gonna have less of that texture and more of a, solid, a sort of a solid background um, when you're painting, okay? Then there's also a variant of this that has type coming through, which you might think is weird, but as a texture, it's really fun to have type. So you can see this here, it's like old typewriter 
letter forms that are built in to the brush as well. I like this one for using just pure black because look at what you get when you paint with this thing. The suggestion of those letter, letter forms, those random letter forms coming through, adds a pretty slick texture. Grab some white paint over it, grab some uh, black. What inspired this brush, you might wonder? Well, it was the phenomenal work of Dave McKean. If you're not familiar with his work, look him up. Uh, brilliant artist who did covers for Sandman back in the 90s and a whole bunch of other cool things. So there you go. The Wave Runner brush. All right, so let's take a look at the Wave Runner. Here you go. Why is it called the Wave Runner? Well, it's sort of this wavy sort of a pattern to the stamp as it gets dragged along, and uh, I really just like this one. Why is it useful? Well, there's a, lots of things you could do, obviously water, but what I like it for as well is this. Let me just show you something. I'm gonna grab that fresh cut brush, size it down a little bit, and I'm just gonna draw a little face here. Oop. All right, there's a person. Okay, and check this out. I'm gonna grab the Wave Runner brush, and I love drawing hair with this. It's like braided, textured hair. Isn't that gorgeous? So that's a pretty fun little way to use that brush as well. Alrighty. Moving on. So we have the Leaf Breaker brush. Leaf Breaker. I just used this for a postcard that I did for my picture book agent. And um, it's just great for painting foliage and things like that. So I'm painting little stuff like this. And then watch this. You blow it out and look what you get. So it's got all this control having to do with the pressure that you're applying with the stylus. There's also a really funky texture built in. So this is the Leaf Breaker. And I used this to death in this promo piece I did where I painted these two little bunnies walking through the woods looking for a place to have a picnic. And um, I had used this brush by layering like this, lighter color on top, see that? Put the darker color down first, put a nice light color on top. You could probably hear me sort of stabbing at my canvas with my stylus, right? These Wacom styli can really handle that kind of abuse as well as the, uh, the glass of the stylus. Really, really durable, I love these things. Go down to a nice dark color again, add a few accents here and there, look at that. So that is the Leaf Breaker. The Spladoosh is just what it sounds like, Spladoosh, right? Big splashy kind of a brush. So let's take a look at that thing. Whoopsie, sorry, here we go, Spladoosh. Bam! Now, this thing is monstrous. Look, it's 900 pixels, okay? And you're getting multiple instances of the stamp when you paint with it, as well as some color dynamics. So um, really fantastic for splashy effects like what you're seeing me put down right here. Also great to set the brush mode to clear up here, instantly turn it into a racer, get rid of some of that action, and then look what you got. You got all these fantastic variants of the basic set of shapes that are built in. And the dual brush, of course, is really adding a lot to this. So it's removing part of that stamp as you go through in a random fashion. Um, really fun to play with this one. If you go to my Instagram feed, scroll down, maybe about like 30, 40 posts back, you'll find a surfer that I painted using this strictly for the water and the splash of the waves. There is a variant of this brush as well. This one has a lot more negative space built in. So also really fun to play with, okay? Check them both out, look at that. Mm. Good times. They're also really monstrous. The first one, 900 and some change. The variant is over a thousand pixels. These are big brushes. All right, cardboard wash. Well, exactly what you probably think it is. It's a wash brush that has a lovely cardboard texture built in. Look at that. That's one of my faves. Zoom in on that full 100% full, uh, so you can really see what that looks like when I paint with it. So of course, this is more of a watercolor sort of effect for a brush, right? And um, the more you paint with it, the darker it gets, you know, until you get up to full, the full value. Uh, this is not set to multiply like a lot of my watercolor brushes, it's just normal. Uh, but you can of course take advantage of brush modes and make this do whatever you like, okay? So there you go. That's a fun one. Uh, now of course there is a variant of this as well, it's called Cardboard Wash 2. And here's what it looks like. Now this is more of a brushy 
brush. You can see what's happening with the bristles there and the brush strokes. And I really like this one for painting inside of a selection. So if I were to make a selection here, um, just do this. Oh, kitty cat, okay, sitting here having a nice time. Um, and then come across it like that. Sort of got that like Eric Carl kind of vibe to it, right? Love Eric Carl. But really fun way to just kind of paint inside of a shape. Maybe we need some really bright pink in there. Pop here and there, bam, bam. And then look what you got, huh? Isn't that fun? So that's a really fun way to use that brush. But of course, you'll figure out much cooler ways to use it. I know you will. And the watercolor handmade paper. So this has got a really great sort of um, irregular edge to it when you're painting. And the paper texture that is um, being used is this sort of handmade paper. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, really like this one. Nice washy effects, right? And there you go. So using light pressure means I get a very faint mark. Heavier pressure means I can build up to a much darker color. Moving on, we've got this wide vine charcoal. Well, what is that? It's exactly like what it sounds like. Sort of this vine charcoal that you would use for shading or for just adding a little tone to an area. Um, I like this one in combination with a, a drawing tool of some kind, something from the drawing box in the Mega Pack, you know, where you could do some charcoal drawing and then go ahead and add some tone with this bad boy so you'd be in good shape with that. And you can see that I'm moving from dark to light using the pressure that I'm applying. Here's a variation of it with sort of a more cardboard kind of a texture to it, which is really quite nice as well. I know you'll find some uses for that. And then we have the old fence. The old fence brush looks like this. See that? So you can immediately tell why it's called the old fence brush because of that texture that it reveals as you paint with it. Um, this one though, I think uh, you'll find is quite interesting for cityscapes. Like if you're doing a nighttime cityscape or you're trying to suggest a city in the background in a comic that you're doing, because of the vertical lines that you get with the texture, you can quickly fill in this idea of there being skyscrapers off in the distance and get these cool uh, cityscapes like this, you know? So it's nighttime, boom, got some buildings in the background, maybe some reflections of those buildings down in the water or something like that. Okay, but lots of cool things you can do with that brush. And that again is the old fence. Water lilies, named after our good friend Claude Monet, is um, probably gonna look like what you'd expect. So there you go. This is another impressionist brush. Really nice for impressionist brush painting effects. So um, every mark you make, slightly different hue, saturation, and value. And uh, again, you could take advantage of this at different sizes. So if I size it down, I have more control with the area that I'm painting, right? You can also control the size of those little dots and things like that. So this is a fun one to use. Check that out. Uh, Dotty Pinwheel is a strange one. I don't know where I came up with this one, but that's what it does. Look at that. So that's again, interesting for adding texture to an area. Maybe you've got some solid color that you've painted. You just want to add a hit of texture. So for example, let's say that I've got the old fence and I, I paint this, this area like this, okay? And I say, oh, you know, I want to add a little weird texture to that. Okay, let's do that. Grab that dotty pinwheel, apply a slightly darker color, right? I'm going to lock the transparency of this layer and then just come over here and add that and check it out. Boom, that's what you get. So. You guys find a cool way to use that. I know you will. There's a variant of this brush. The variant of this brush is much denser. And so what I think this is good for is this, watch. I'm gonna go dark to light. So if you're building up a cool gradation that you wanna have some texture, right? Almost like really dense cross hatching. This is what you can do using this dotty pinwheel variant. So let's get in on that nice and tight. You can see how that looks. Lovely. So comics artists, not a bad thing. Okay, moving on, we have the Fragonard. Fragonard, amazing French painter. I was uh, in a museum looking at some of his work. Um, it was the Frick or Fricky. How do you say it? Frick or Fricky? 
in New York, and they have this Fragonard room, these beautiful panels that he painted. And I was looking at how he painted the the leaves and the trees, and there was a sort of a systematic uh, approach he had, this this kind of like formula um, where he would do this. He would he would have these these leaves that were dark. See this? And by the way, this is controlled with the tilt of your brush. So I'm I'm angling my brush to make the leaves go in the direction that I want. So he would do this, he have the dark ones, and then he would just grab a slightly lighter color and do these hits like this over the top. And I was like, wow, immediately that adds this sense of there being like these dense areas of foliage. And these are what he, the leaves would look like in the backgrounds of the painting. So these wouldn't be like right up in your face. They'd be kind of um, a little bit farther away you know, like a couple of hits of light like this here and there. See that? And there you've got these like Fragona leaves that you've just painted like this. So I really was inspired um, by this formula that he had devised. Make sure I get in 100% zoom so you can see those, how they look, okay? And there's a variant of this as well. And I'll just throw that on top actually better for me to use it on its own so you can really see how that looks. It's got a little bit of texture built in. It's also got a little bit of an opacity change happening with the um, amount of pressure that I'm using as I'm painting. Okay, if that makes sense, there you go. But same basic idea. Okay, so those are the Fragonar brushes. The Ruffin 2020 is a variation of the Ruffin brush from about a year and a half, two years ago that I released. Um, hard to explain how, to, how it feels to paint with it, you just have to try it, but it's one of those brushes that I've uh, heard from concept artists that they just use for all kinds of things where they just want to rough in an area, rough in a painting, and they want a little bit of texture built in, and they can also size it down, and they'll use it for like little smaller areas and things like that. It's pretty versatile, uh, just give it a try, what else can I say? Scritchy Scratchy, look at this. This is a texture brush, clearly. And um, it's called Scritchy Scratchy because of these scratchy textures that you get with this brush. Now this one also has color dynamics built in, so if I were to paint with a color, look what that does. And so if you paint a really dense area, check this out. Look at all that nice variation you get in there, okay? Really nice scratchy scratchy patterns. Pretty cool stuff. Alrighty. Now we get on to some halftone brushes. The halftone doily is called that because look at that doily pattern you get in there. See that? Makes me think of that hilarious um, Portlandia sketch with Jeff Goldblum and the doily shop. If you haven't seen that, look it up. And for those who have seen it, you'll get what that is. Okay, halftone lattice. Well, this is lattice. Look at this, beautiful. So a totally interesting range going from pure black to this pattern here, to this, to that, to these little dots, um, everything in between. So all of that happening with the pressure of your brush, of course. The biohazard brush, I'm gonna zoom out for this one because it's a monster, 700 pixels. Again, great textural brush. Um, the shape reminded me of this warning, this biohazard warning that you see. Um, so this one could be good for filling in some like suggestion of some foliage in the background. Biohazard 2, much darker. Look at the contrast here, pure black or nothing. That's what you're getting with this one. But speaking of foliage, the Jungle Jam brushes. Now these are really big beasts, 1,000 pixels. Need to quickly add in some jungle foliage in your comic, okay, your illustration. Bam, here is the ticket. Now, of course, again, color dynamics would make a big difference with this one. So if I were to do it in color, you just see what you get right there. Um, and there's a variant of this, the Jungle Jam variant. Here it is. Remember, if you go small, you're gonna get nice tiny leaves like this. But if you go big, right, and that's me just applying, again, more pressure with the brush, okay, see that? Pressure is gonna control all that good stuff. Go a little lighter here on top, add some stuff. But look how fast you can just build out this sort of jungle scene. Like that, I'll zoom in 100% so you can see how sharp that is, right? No softies here. 
All right, moving on. This is the GeoTree brush, and this was just inspired by seeing these illustrations we've had for, oh my gosh, now, 100 years at least, uh, the, these really beautiful oversimplifications of uh, trees in the distance. See that? I just love the way those look in picture books and posters and things like that. And I just thought, hey, why not make a brush where you could just quickly throw those in, right? Why not? So controlling in with pressure, here we go in the distance, I've got some smaller ones, go a little lighter, come up front. Oh look, bigger ones here in the foreground. Maybe even bigger ones, right? So you can go massively big like that. I think I just accidentally opened up something I didn't mean to, oh well. Um, Okie dokie, moving on. We have this GeoTree directional. Well, this just follows a direction of your brush. So look at that. Lots of cool things you can do with that. Probably the most obvious is, oh, I'm gonna paint a pretty sun for my picture book. Ta-da, gorgeous. Oh, look at that little texture in there and color dynamics, right? So much fun. Alrighty, for those of you who are big fans of the classic line art illustration in the golden age of American illustration, we have the Bob Peak Brush. Ha ha, I call it the Pob Beak Brush. Look at me trying to be clever right there. Um, so there's a one. We have the Briggs, which is named after our good pal Austin Briggs. Um, look at all this variation you can get with pressure. So yeah, anybody who's into those classic drawings from early to mid-century, right? You're gonna get a kick out of these and you're gonna find all kinds of ways to do neato mosquito drawings with them. And the Briggs photocopy is really, really sharp. I love this one because it just doesn't leave anything but black on your paper. So this is the Briggs photocopy. You want a nice variation to your line. You want it to feel chopped up like it's been run through that photocopier a dozen times. Okay, well, here's what you're gonna get. I just love this one. Um, no line is like the last, but plenty of control. Look how fine I can get with this thing. Teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny, but I can also do that all with the same brush. That one is a versatile beast. Charcoal, ah, well, why do you think it's called charcoal? Check it out. It's a charcoal brush, that's cool, all right? And with this brush, if I use tilt, look at this. I'm tilting my stylus away from vertical. Here's vertical, I'm tilting it away from vertical, right, I'm changing the angle to 45 degrees or 60 degrees or somewhere in that vicinity. And that's gonna expose more of the paper texture. So see this, I can go from here to just start to angle it up to pure black. Fun things you can do with that. And the zine liner, where does that come from? Well, if you ever, collected zines in the 90s, uh, you will know that the quality of the reproduction was not always great. So again, we have this nice line brush you can use for cool textural work. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just fun. What can I tell you? Look at this. Make this little cartoon character. And all I'm doing, I'm just drawing regularly. I'm not doing anything fancy here, but I get all that nice variation in the line happening naturally with the brush. Okay, and he's all dressed up for something important, so he's gotta have a tie on, okay. And last but not least, certainly not least, the Milton Hendricks pencil. What is this brush? So, this was an idea that Mr. John Hendricks and I concocted. Um, the, we concocted the formula for this when I was on a school visit, Washington University with him. The great Milton uh, Glazer, who used who did these beautiful multicolored pencil drawings, where he used those multicolored pencils you can buy that have four colors built into the wood casing all at once. And depending on how you angle the pencil, you're going to get a different color. Well, hey, check this out. Same. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Got to select the brush first. Same deal. Check it out. Whoa, how fun is this? So this is one pencil. All right. And when I say pencil, I mean it because with light pressure, look. I'm getting a pencil mark, I'm getting that texture to come through, I'm angling my hand in different directions, and I get all these different colors. All right, my line art can change. I'm also using the tip of the pencil by just changing the angle at which I'm drawing by holding the stylus, okay? So, oh my gosh, well, there's a million things you can do with this, and I'm sure your imaginations will just take over and you'll be so happy to play with it. Look at that. 
That is just so fun. Ah, okay. And folks, that wraps it up. Now, when are these going to be available? Well, June in the United States, and definitely by second week of July worldwide, hopefully sooner. Uh, but I just want to make sure that we're expecting these to be come out, coming out at the right time. Um, that is a whole massive, ridiculously large brush set. So um, maybe too much to release in one go. Maybe I should have split these in two, but no, I decided to go nuts and just make them all for this one release. I hope you all have a great time with them. They are really fun. Um, and we will hang out again and do some more drawing at some point, but I wanted you guys to check this out and get a nice sneak peek. So thanks and um, everybody stay safe, stay healthy. Please take care of one another, be kind, and I'll see you next time.